Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring a rather odd looking ship. Well, some people think it, it's beautiful, others have their doubts. And that's of course the Nilsson, the upcoming 3 XP premium ship uh, for the Royal Navy. Now it's tier 7 matchmaking and uh, the enemy has a carrier which is of course a bit of an issue because carriers are actually one of the major weaknesses for this ship uh, the very very close range anti air on the ship is very good but it's so such short range that uh, it poses an issue even when going aft and uh, the aa range module uh, i've found that it simply doesn't have enough range and the long range aura is simply too ineffective so ultimately uh, specking AA in any way seems kind of pointless on this ship uh, because well it doesn't matter what you do if someone semi-competent is striking you you won't be able to do much the ship is also rather long and large in general uh, the handling is okay but it's slow and this combination of course of large size and slow speed I think the max speed is 24 knots or that might actually that might be with the speed flag Anyway, this combination of course means that you are very vulnerable to carriers, so that's a pretty obvious weakness. And uh, worth noting is that this is of course still a work in progress, but uh, I'm still using the pre-nerf version of the heel, meaning the heel I'm running right now is uh, the heel that uh, will get well this is stronger heal it heals far more than it will when the ship goes live they are of course tuning down the Royal Navy heals because they were considered too strong and uh, they will be significantly changing the amount they heal however I selected a game where the heal plays a very very small role so you will be able to basically see how the ship does uh, regardless of which heal I'm running now I'm taking some incoming fire from long range from the far right, so I'm making sure to angle. Uh, the ship is fairly tanky. Uh, I say fairly tanky in the sense that uh, the actual broadside armor isn't too bad. It's like 356 millimeters or something. As long as you remain angled, you don't have too many issues. However, if you do give flat broadside, then of course, well, much like many other battleships, you will get citadeled quite easily. You might notice how slow the shells are. Uh, much like the War Spite, the Nelson has very slow shell velocity, but in return, of course, it has quite accurate guns, 1.9 Sigma on the guns, and uh, because the shells are so slow, they, of course, have, just like many Royal Navy ships in general, they have excellent penetration, just like the War Spite. So, honestly, if you enjoy playing the War Spite, you will probably enjoy sp uh, playing the Nelson, because the Nelson... Um, has the same type of gun characteristics or and of course unlike the war spite you don't need massive random penetrations from everywhere but that's another issue so the shells are slow but I found them to be uh, pretty consistent sometimes RNG does troll you but then again I feel like that happens to all battleships so it's not really something Nielsen specific but if you're expecting some super accurate guns uh, be, be aware that these can troll you if you do however land uh, all your shells on a target you tend to or many shells on a target you tend to consistently do very heavy damage because once again the whole plunging characteristic means that the penetration is excellent because that's how Royal Navy like to do it they arc this high high floating type of uh, shells that plunged and had excellent penetration and this Texas is a pretty good example he's 16 km away and when dispersion does favor you for example I'm getting really good uh, dispersion here uh, you see just how punishing these shells are and there was no citadels involved but it was still a straight up 24 and a half K damage just with eight penetrations so the damage potential the ship has is pretty damn extreme um, if you do land aim for the citadel our shells hit the citadel you tend to pretty consistently also get citadels uh, I haven't felt there's too much of that random bouncing over guns and stuff so the TLDR is that I like the guns. I find the guns to be very consistent. Another thing, of course, is the ship design. Uh, all the three turrets are in the front. However, unlike the Izumo, where uh, the third turret points backwards, on the Nelson, the third turret tur points forward, which, of course, means that you can easily switch sides from uh, right to left without having uh, to turn any of your guns completely around, meaning around the back way, but you can turn them around the front, which of course means that angling in the ship is honestly very easy. If you want to use the third turret, you have to give as much broadside as I'm giving now, uh, which really isn't that much. 
and um, if you have to quickly maneuver there's no issues because of the way the turrets work in fact i'm demonstrating it right now you see how i turn all the turrets uh, have no issues turning around the front which of course makes it very easy to remain angled while keeping your guns on the target so uh, the overall gun characteristics and the, gun, the way the firing angles the way the guns behave have been very satisfying to me uh, the shell the I am of course running Jack Dunkirk I need to mention that so that takes the turret traverse down from 45 seconds to 36 so it's a nine second increase I felt it gives it a bit of a that Scharnhorst feeling where you can quickly change targets well quickly and quickly but the turret traverse is still pretty comfortable uh, enemy nil there's actually a super tester in this game another Nilsson player so you get to see a bit Nilsson versus Nilsson action here and but he's kind of sailing away so never mind that he's running the Nelson normal camo whereas I'm of course running the victory day camo I'll show it I'll show show off that camo better uh, later on in the in the hangar so you guys can see it um, another weakness well besides this of course um, the armor in general on the ship the bow is 25 millimeters which is pretty common for battleships at this tier. What this of course means is that you can get overmatched through the nose. So if you're hoping that you can just point nose in towards everyone and be unkillable, that doesn't happen. The nose is overmatchable by any, pretty much anything you face. 380 millimeters and above will overmatch your 25 millimeter nose. So that means Bayerns, Gneisenaus, Bismarck's Turpits, and of course Nagatos, Colorados. All the stuff that you will face pretty much will be able to overmatch your nose. So you, you want to remain slightly angled, which you kind of naturally do anyway if you want to use your third turret. So it's not really that big of an issue. The issue though is uh, almost the entire ship, the, the deck and the rest of the ship, is covered in 32mm armor. And uh, now of course because the ship is so large, and because the ship is so slow, being covered in 32mm armor uh, exposes another weakness in the ship. And that is of course, uh, that is of course uh, HE spam. IFHE HE spam. And well in general, any type of, even 203mm HE spam of course, any type of HE spam will do very heavy consistent damage. Uh, in fact, only if they hit your turrets will the HE shells shatter, otherwise they will deal good pen damage and well of course fires and because you're so large you have a large chance of starting fires as well so the two major weaknesses of the ship both have to do with its size its size and its slow speed in general uh, he spam and carriers those are pretty much the two the two weaknesses now those are weaknesses that pretty much many battleships share to be fair um, the german line does significantly better against carriers and i would say uh, Colorado does significantly better against carriers as well. Here, for example, Omaha, something that you tend to like get overpens and stuff on quite easily, but I have no issues getting double citadels when I aim for the citadel. And th that's the thing I've noticed that the guns are very consistent, and I really like that. I like consistent guns, much like with the Warspite. One of the reasons the Warspite was long, one of, one of my favorite tier 6 ships, was simply because the guns were very rewarding. If you aimed correctly and your shells landed where you aimed, you tended to get really good results, and that's something I really like in ships in general. But you can see the top speed here, I'm trying to push around this island at full speed, I'm sailing pretty much in a straight line, and the acceleration takes some time, and in general the speed well, you're not exactly going to outrun anyone. However, concealment is strong, like on, well, I can't actually mention that, but the concealment is very strong on the Nelson. It actually has 12.8 km concealment with Concealment Expert. You can't slot the module, of course, since it's tier 7, but it's very important to note this 12.8 concealment is really, really good for a tier 7 battleship, and it allows you to disengage a lot easier. I can show you actually the nose thing I mentioned. You see, I'm aiming for the nose, and you saw how I got pens and overpens just by aiming at the nose. You, of course, overmatch other Nelsons quite easily. Furutaka just launched his torps, that's why I don't have any issues aiming for the Nelson, since I know the, Nels the Furutaka doesn't have torps left. And another issue that's worth... Well, I'm bouncing his AP, no issue. Um, another issue that's worth or a point that's worth making is, uh, when it comes to brawling in this ship, the guns are, of course, situated, situated very far in the front. And this is actually an advantage when you're brawling nose-to-nose. -nose. Focus firing the 
torpedo bomber in case he goes for me. Now this is actually an advantage when you're nose to nose, and uh, I will dem you can quite easily outplay other battleships because uh, because of the extreme length of the ship and because of how far the turrets are, you can actually shoot them from a very extreme angle before they can usually shoot you. You notice I press right mouse to lock my guns so they don't move left and right, and I wait until he sails into my crosshair, and then I pull the trigger. And that's kind of what I mean, because the, f the guns are so far in the front, you get these flat broadsides on the enemy ship with all your guns much earlier than they get on you. Because in order to use their back guns against you in a brawling situation like that, uh, if if he was, for example, a Colorado or a Nagato, in order to use his back guns on you, he, he pretty much has to sail all the way past your ship to be able to use them. So in nose-to-nose -nose situations, sorry about my phone, in nose-to-nose -nose situations, uh, the advantage is of having these forward-situated turrets is uh, very, very strong. It's a significant advantage in those kind of brawling situations. It is, of course, a bit of a disadvantage if you're trying to kite away, because then you have a blind spot behind you, and so forth. Uh, the game ended, not really that long of a game, but I think I got to cover and show off the things I really wanted. I did shoot down five planes, with five planes which is of course very little considering I'm running AFT. Uh, I did get five kills, but of course there's no Kraken, there's no Confederate High Caliber, you know these usual things, because uh, uh, this is a test ship, so I don't get any rewards. But still, a uh, Kraken is of course always nice. If we look at uh, the detailed report, well you see I didn't really tank too much this game, so that's what I meant, that the heal wasn't really relevant for this commentary, which is why I felt that this represents the ship quite well, because the heal played such a small role. And uh, overall, uh, well, anyways, actually, let's move on to my recommended build now. Right, as usual, well, mod I will start with the modules, even though there's not much to talk about here. Uh, you should, of course, run premium damage control and premium heal, because, well, you're playing a premium, so there's no reason to not run the better consumables. Upgrade-wise, I've gone for main arms mod 1, uh, better dispersion, and just additional tankiness because well I feel like this ship needs tankiness more than it needs anything else because most of the time you're kind of sitting bow in and you don't really need maneuverability as much as you need just general sustain and survivability and these two modules are exactly designed for that. Uh, Captain perks wise I've really enjoyed going priority target and of course I'm running a Jack Dunkirk, uh, this is my go-to captain on all, all, on all Royal Navy battleships because of course he has a buffed Jack of all trades which reduces all consumables, that is repair and heal by 10% and he has a faster expert marksman, it's 1 degrees instead of 0 0.7 so these are all great advantages but in terms of starting a new captain I would probably go priority target uh, expert marksman, superintendent, concealment expert, and then adrenaline rush. And once I have adrenaline rush, I'll probably go jack of all trades. And I've been running AFT, but this is mostly because I've been using this captain on all Royal and Navy battleships. Um, I can't really tell you more about that, but um, I think that uh, running uh, fire prevention might actually be better, not just for this ship, but in general for the line. Uh, because, well, the main issue that the Nelson has, it's weak to both HE, as I mentioned, and it's weak to carriers. Uh, the idea was with AFT was to increase the AA range a bit, uh, to get these l short range AA guns to somewhat decent range, but really it doesn't help, it's not nearly enough. Uh, and you're so long and big that if a carrier wants to drop for you outside of this range, they can easily do it. Even if you slot the 20% AA range instead of better dispersion, um, it still doesn't feel like it's quite enough to actually stop any sort of strikes. So ultimately, I think it's better to just go fire prevention, which will help you against carriers, since less fire started by the bombs, and in general will help you against all the HE spam. So AFT is something I'll be using, but it's not something I actually recommend. Last perk will go into preventive maintenance for less chance of losing um, all these turrets, which does happen to pretty much everyone. Uh, Captain perks wise, wait, no, sorry, no, I just want Captain perks. I meant flag wise. The priority flags here are, of course, uh, more healing and reduced fires. These two are the bread and butter of every battleship. And since we run Jack Dunkirk with reduced consumable time, running November Foxtrot on top of that is of course fantastic because it reduces the cooldown even further, making you much better at those. Some additional things I run is faster speed since I have a lot of the flags and just general XP flags on top. 
uh, that's not really too important. And the camo, of course, might as well show off the camo. Uh, this is the default camo, or the, well, the default, the premium camo. And, oops, God damn it. it doesn't actually look that bad. It's a decent looking camo. The bonuses are the pretty usual for a premium 50% XP, but no real extra special thing on top. The camo I, of course, used myself is Victory Day, which uh, was on sale during Victory Day, so... It's an amazing camo that I pretty much use on every ship. But that was my Nelson first impressions. And well, if you want a TLDR, uh, I would say that this ship seems quite strong. Uh, I mean, they are nerfing the heal, so that will significantly reduce the survivability. And the survivability in general of this ship depends a lot on not just matchmaking, but how heavily it gets focused by HEO carriers. When people learn how, how vulnerable it, it is to those two targets, I think the focus will increase. But it's still a fairly tanky ship. It has a nice health pool, and nice healing, and of course the concealment is allows it to disengage quite easily. So it does seem overall like, like a very strong ship. Good guns, good armor, um, no weird citadels or weird pens. And uh, the weaknesses are obvious, the strengths, obviously the guns with the Sigma are also obvious. So overall it's just a very solid ship. Um, I would call, I, with the current heal it has, I would call it overpowered. But uh, the heal is already being nerfed for all Royal Navy battleships. So it might not really be that big of a deal. I think uh, this ship might end up being pretty damn solid straight out of the box, so to say. Of course, this is a work in progress, so this might change entirely and make my entire first impressions a bit completely invalid. But that remains to be seen. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good one.